Hello, I'm Eric Kimball, and today in this video, I'm going to show you how I have easily and very inexpensively organized my tools on the wall over my workbench like you see behind me here. I have not used pegboard. I haven't used Kaizen foam. I haven't used French cleats, and I haven't purchased any uh, factory-made, store-bought organizational accessories to get the organization you see here. What I have done instead is, for the most part, hung my tools up using scrap pieces of a 12 gauge Romex electrical wire and, whoops, number eight by three quarter inch pan head sheet metal screws, both of which I had here on hand. I'm also gonna show you some other very inexpensive or free uh, tool organizing ideas that I've integrated here with the copper wire hangers. To begin this journey of simple organizational excellence, I need to first show you the fundamental technique that's common to all the wire hangers. Okay, so here is my scrap piece of 12 gauge Romex electrical wire. For most hangers, a piece around six inches long is a good length to work with. So I'm gonna use these pliers to cut myself off a six inch piece. Then I'm going to take uh, my wire strippers, which have a little like grippy pliers end on them. And I'm going to pull the three wires out of the sheathing. There's the ground, okay. And uh, we'll get the white neutral and we'll get the hot wire out of there. Okay, see how easy that was? I use only the bare copper wires for the tool hangers. So I need to strip the insulation off of these insulated wires and that's very easy to do with a utility knife. Just uh, basically just skin it right off of there like that. Very easy. While I'm at it, I'll do another one here. And yeah, so there we go. I have three bare copper wires now to make hooks with. Now for a basic hanger, I need to make a nice loop in the end of the copper wire. And I've got my green shirt for a background, so you should be able to see that, that nice loop. And it's an easy loop to make with the right tool. And this right here is the right tool. This wire stripper made by the Ideal Company is the model 45-120. They have been making this tool for like over 50 years. It's a classic. And, and it's a classic for a good reason. It's a great wire stripper. I'll put an affiliate link below if you want to get yourself a pair of these. But let me just show you now how amazing these wire strippers are for making the loops you need. To make the loop, first grip the very end of the copper wire like that. And then you turn the pliers and the wire around like this. And I usually do this in one fluid motion, not slow like this. And you get your loop like that. And then you take your pliers, you can finesse it, you see that? And then we'll close it, okay? And uh, yeah, you can play around with that and get it just right. And that wire loop is perfect for our number eight by three quarter inch screw. Now I'm gonna show you some of the ways that ridiculously simple little pieces of copper wire like you see right here can be used to hang your tools. My backboard here is standard 7 16 inch OSB. And right here, you see a very simple hook for hanging up my file card. Place for everything, everything in its place. That's where the file card goes. I have files located near the file card. I have cold chisels, I have my hammers, I've got my vise on the bench here. So that's a good spot for it. And you can see that's real simple. Now, of course, this is not six inches long. After bending it, getting it just the way I want it, I uh, snip off the excess. Here I have a row of similar 
single hooks to hang my wrenches. It works just fine. Right here you can see that I have used double hooks to hang my metal snips up. All right, we got a single hook here for the six inch knife. This end of my workbench, this corner, is right next to the door. The door is right there. So I have some garden tools here, like my dibble, uh, my beloved vintage Brookstone dibble my son gave me as a gift, and uh, that's on double copper hooks right there. All my hammers are hung with two hooks. You could say they are cradled with two hooks. This uh, Blue Point ball peen hammer is 32 ounces. That's two pounds that is being held with two copper wires. These vice grip pliers are all nicely arranged right where I need them with two hooks of copper wire held with a sheet metal screw. It's that simple and that effective. Yes, yeah, sometimes when you're taking the tool off or putting it on, the wire will bend, but you just bend it back. It's not, uh, no, it's not a problem. See that? Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm so pleased because prior to making this uh, tool board, I had chaos in this room. This is, this is big deal for me. Now the next step after making hooks is to make loops. Sometimes loops work better. And these are uh, technically, I think we would call them half loops. And I have these, a few of these, these here for my long screwdrivers, but they work just fine. Right here is an example of a full loop holder uh, held with one screw. And it's, these cable cutters have a spring handle. So the loop not only holds the cutters, but it holds them closed. Here's another variation. This is where I put my wood chisels. I have a copper uh, half loop, I guess we would call that, long uh, copper half loop in conjunction with a wood shelf. And uh, I actually have two more wood chisels. I, I have a, a one inch and a couple of three quarters. I don't have a whole set because I determined years ago that I don't need a whole set. I just use the three quarter and the one inch but they're in my house at the moment. And this wood shelf, this is just pine, scrap wood pine. I have two screws going through the front into the OSB, and uh, that works just fine. The black you see on the front of these shelves is a Gorilla brand duct tape. It sticks really well and covers the screw holes. And it also allows these labels, these white labels to be more visible. So I like that, I like that look. I like that tape with the white uh, labels. I'll have more to say about labeling uh, later on. Right next to the chisel holder section, I have this uh, box with my Sawzall blades. And this is another technique. This is held in place, not with a half loop, but uh, we have the shelf on the bottom and then I have a, uh, a hook. It's a long hook shaped to go around the box and we would call that I guess a horizontal hook. Okay so that keeps that in place. It corrals that and I'll put my rasp back right there. Here you can see I have a, a can of thread cutting oil that's also on a shelf with a horizontal hook. Comes out and around. Not a half loop but a hook that corrals that thread cutting oil. Now, I don't use that very often. I do use it occasionally, so it's way up near the top here. I don't put things that I'm using a lot uh, up near the top. I try to keep them down lower. Here, you can see a horizontal hook. No shelf, just a hook to hold my line level. And this little line level comes in handy for leveling the wood shelves. And you can, it's actually level. Very good. Here's another variation. Two uh, copper hooks on the bottom, upside down hooks, and a uh, horizontal hook here. Hold the tube of lithium grease very nicely. You can incorporate a 
copper wire curb into the front of your shelves if needed. And here, uh, yeah, right. I'll show you that uh, the curb is right there and you, you just drill a small hole partway down into your wood and push the copper wire down in. Here I have a hook on the top and uh, that holds my screw checkers like so. Here's another copper wire curb on a shelf in conjunction with a couple of hooks. These hold my uh, paper, it's uh, file, file cards that I use to write down lists or whatever I need to write down. If I hear a good quote on a podcast, I'll grab my pencil and I'll grab a card there and I'll write it down. So that's another curb example. Another thing you can do with the copper wire pieces is shown right here. This is a hold down. This file on its shelf tends to be a little bit uh, heavier on the handle end, so it wants to tip up. So I just put a little a piece of copper wire there to hold that. Problem solved. And uh, I have an eight inch file shelf, a six inch file shelf, and I've got a 10 incher up above. And I have a whole lot more files, metal files, than those three, but I really don't use them. Those three, 99% of what I ever need a file for, are uh, can be taken care of with an eight, a six, and the 10 up above. And the shelves are just so much easier to uh, get the file. Instead of having a, a thing that you put them in, uh, it's just so much easier to have a little shelf. See how easy that was? Okay, so another application for the copper wire is here. I, this is my only piece of artwork on the tool wall. I, I think that's perfectly appropriate to have a little bit of art. And this screwed piece of copper wire serves to hold that frame just right. It has a tendency to want to tilt over. So got a little piece of copper wire there. Okay, right here with these nut drivers, I had a real flash of brilliance, if I don't say so myself. These are hung up, not on copper hooks, but on copper hooks that are holding rare earth magnets. Little three quarter inch diameter rare earth magnets. Now I happen to have these because I had a product idea that never panned out, but this idea certainly has panned out. This is so cool. And let me tell you something about this. When I uh, first thought of using the magnets, I figured, well, I'll just put a screw through that hole and I'll hold the, the nut drivers that way. But it's really not that strong. If instead you connect your nut driver to the bottom of that magnet, it's a whole lot stronger. Okay, so I've got a row of these. This is my Vaco uh, nut driver collection. And I'm lacking the 3 8 I still gotta get that. But look, that is, that is so cool. Those, uh, those magnets are not that expensive. That is something you would normally have to buy if, unless you had a product idea and bought a bunch of them and it didn't pan out. But there you go. Uh, so simple and these are up high but they're very easy to get to standing on the ground you know the usual way is you've got them in something like this but uh, a holder like that but hey there you go okay we're gonna leave the realm of copper wire hangers and I'm going to show you a few other uh, ideas I have for organizing inexpensive simple ideas these uh, cups I got them at an estate sale in the free box. These are Tupperware, vintage Tupperware, and they're just, uh, I thought I would hang them. See, I drilled some holes. I thought I would hang them on copper wire. That didn't work. The shelf works. This is a three inch wide shelf. Uh, it's not practical when you get much over two and a half, two and a quarter inches to put screws directly through the front to hold the shelf to the OSB. So what I have is pocket screws underneath. And that's it, there's no brackets, it's not heavy, it's not bulky, it's very sleek, 
just a piece of three quarter inch pine held on with the pocket screws. And uh, so I've got things here and I've got them labeled and this is just so convenient, especially the pencil thing and the screwdriver tips. I've got a little, uh, if I need a screwdriver tip, that's not organization right there, let me tell you, but it, but it kind of is. I dump them into a plastic uh, tote and find the one I want and then uh, dump them back in there. Um, but anyway, yeah, matches. I'm always looking for matches in the summer. I want to start a fire outside, burn some rubbish or something. Everything here is organized. I don't have spade bits on the wall. I just got a, a cup full of them here, which is good enough, you know. These are Tupperware uh, model number 873-30. I see that they're available. Uh, people sell these uh, for not a whole lot of money on, uh, on eBay. Now, underneath this shelf, I have some, these are dessert cups from Tupperware, and there are my screws. And I have, a, I have my copper wire right here in another cup that doesn't fit up there. It's, uh, that's an extra cup. But these dessert cups, um, item, item 1229-4, vintage uh, Tupperware dessert cups. These are kind of handy. Uh, it's kind of a catch-all. Uh, thing here. Uh, but you got the idea. I got my zip ties. I use those once in a while. Magnifying glass, uh, miscellaneous small drill bits, and um, you know, stuff like that. Here I have another shelf here with my digital caliper, a very handy tool I sell on eBay, and uh, I uh, use that digital caliper a lot. Okay, now over here to the right of my workbench, not over the workbench, I have more tools and things um, on the wall. And I put things that I don't use that much over here. And I'll show you the whole, I'll give you a tour of the whole wall at the very end here, but I just wanna show you that uh, this is a three and a half inch wide shelf. And I have my, I've got one of the original Craig jigs, bought it at a woodworking show years ago. What a fantastic tool. And I think you can see the pocket holes here. I put them on the top instead of the bottom so they're not visible. I'm standing on a step stool here. So that's how I get access to these tools. But that holds the Craig jig just fine and other things. Right here I have a shelf for my long drill bits. And uh, every so often I need a long drill bit. And uh, usually I'm fishing around for them. Drill bit extensions too. and. I, you'll notice instead of copper curb, I have um, screws for a curb to hold those on. So that's where I decided to put those. Okay, I wanna cover labels real quick with you and uh, I'll show you how I make them. Uh, we need scissors, we need duct tape. The labels that you see here on these cups are two and one eighth inch by one inch. That's the size that I have in my Dymo Label Writer 450. That's what I'm using. So I've got full size labels here on the cups, but for everything else, I uh, cut them out of the full size label like I'm gonna show you here. Okay, so I am using labels, I should say, instead of uh, making shadows or outlines around the tools. And I don't need a, uh, a label to know what the tool is when it's hanging there. I need a label to know what the tool uh, what, where this tool goes when I've taken it away I, out to my house or on some job somewhere and then I come back and I, I look at all these wires and I, and I can't figure out what, well, where was that uh, claw hammer or the air tire gauge. So anyway, that's why I put these labels up. Here we have uh, the, um, the, uh, the Dymo label. I've put three different tools on it and I'll probably speed this up. Maybe not, and I just cut. Um I just cut these names out, and we'll do the claw hammer. I'm going to cut one end, I'll pull it sharp, but I'm not going to cut the other end yet because I want to be able to peel the back off. Gosh, I hope you're seeing that okay. So anyway, I've got that. We'll get ourselves a little bit of this amazing uh, Gorilla duct tape. That should be good right there. And then I will uh, peel, this, peel the back off of here. I'll stick it on. I'm going to get there where you can see it, right? Right like that. Okay, but I wanted, I'm being kind of fussy here. I want to cut that a little shorter. So there we go. Okay, and then it's just a matter of getting a little black outline around it. Cutting it, saving this, I can get um, both of the other uh, labels with that. And so there we go, claw hammer. Yeah. 
And we'll finish the job here by putting, putting that right in place. Isn't that nice? Yeah, mission accomplished. Okay, I got one more tool holder uh, idea here to show you and then I'll give you the big tour. Okay, let me tell you about these screwdrivers. Uh, these are Pickwicks. They're made in Canada. These are the best multi-bit screwdrivers you're gonna find. The quality of the steel, the design. This is a Pickwick Super 8. Uh, it has uh, the bit, replaceable bit, and you, have, you can look through here all the way around. If you have one of these, you know these are amazing screwdrivers. And uh, when you see one you want, like there's a straight tip bit, you just push through the end here, comes out, and you put it in. This Super 8 also has the uh, nut driver here and, a, and another size nut driver here. Okay, so instead of having lots of screwdrivers all over the board here, I have one that takes care of many different screwdriver functions. So I'm saving space and clutter. And these here, I got the, the basic screwdriver, the Pickwick basic screwdriver. I liked it so much that I thought, you know, I'm going to get the others. This is a metric hex driver with all the different sizes around here. This is a Torx screwdriver with all the different sizes. And this is a uh, SAE hex, all the different sizes around it. I love these screwdrivers. Now, they are in a holder, you can see here, that is a half inch conduit pipe, all right? And I made a half loop here, um, and then I have a little single hook down here that grabs the bottom. So these, they stay in place pretty well. And those work really well for uh, these screwdrivers. I like to keep my Super 8 right over there and then the others. Uh, this is the one I grab most of the time, of course. Now, what you don't have with these screwdrivers is length. So I have some longer screwdrivers on the wall over here that I've already showed you. So you can save a lot of space and you get one of these, you're gonna love it. You are absolutely gonna love it. Okay, over here, next to the screwdrivers, I have the same concept, uh, but I have one inch uh, EMT conduit. And I gotta say, this was a real pain because I cut it with a tubing cutter and then I had to uh, ream it out and it was, it was a drag, that was a drag. I don't know if it was worth it. A uh, plastic uh, conduit or plastic pipe big enough to accept the uh, handles, the insulated handles um, of pliers and stuff like that. That's what I put in these is pliers, just odd pliers. And, uh, and, it, and it works good for that. I guess even if it is a pain to make them out of the EMT, um, it's, uh, it's, you only do it once and it's done. And I, I had this, I didn't go out and buy EMT. These, uh, these old pliers, I go to estate sales and uh, these are electrical pliers. I call them dikes. I don't know if that's acceptable anymore, but um, I, I'm always amazed the old timers, they didn't have insulation. You know, they were, they were tough when it came to electrical, these, uh, these cutters. Oh, okay, so that's the last idea here that I have to show you. Uh, right in front of me, down low, the, these tools that I'm always grabbing uh, to, uh, to uh, do whatever I'm doing here on the bench, all right? Now I'm gonna give you the grand tour and this video will be done. All right, I am now behind the camera and I'm holding it. It's not on a tripod. It might be a little shaky. And I've, uh, I'm off to the side. I'm up, I'm up on my step stool. And these are tools that I don't use that often. The, uh, that trowel, I, I bought that when I started out in the building trades. Got a lot of use at one time, but not anymore. The brace, we use that only for uh, maple syrup. Now see those two, handled, uh, two red handled uh, knives? Uh, I have two of those because I bought one. That's for chicken processing. We use those. And the next year, when it came time to process the chickens, I couldn't find it. So I bought another. Well, I won't have that problem anymore. That draw, that draw shave, my wife bought that for me when we were dating. She was in Vermont, went to a, a flea market and thought I would like that. And she's right. 
the hatchet, the old S-wing hatchet was my grandfather's. That Yankee screwdriver, that's what we had before we had cordless drills. I actually used that quite a bit. When I started, I bought that at an auction years ago. Got the AB block up there for making traditional sawhorses. Check out my video if you haven't seen it. My roof and hammers over there. We got benders. We got, uh, this is a work in progress. See the blank space there? I got room for more tools and I've got more tools. It's, uh, it's gonna always be a work in progress. I can uh, take things off and rearrange very easy with the wires. But you're, you're looking over here at uh, off the bench area and uh, I have a shelf for the commonly used uh, fluids there, the, the aerosols. Now I'll get down and we'll, we'll go over here. All right, okay, got my pull saws up there. Every so often I use those. It's not like I do a lot of woodworking in here. Metric. Oh, I gotta hang my, I gotta hang my uh, scissors up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. You can see these tools, most of which you've seen already. Got the cold chisels. I have a power uh, strip over here, and little odd uh, the bits there will come up over here. And uh, oh, I here's something I'll show you. I didn't. I didn't show you. I got two knives hanging there. And then I've got this uh, six inch a tape measure that I, that a cool sound that I keep right there. Easy reach. Uh, sometimes I just don't need the big tape measure. So we'll come up and we'll look here, we'll look here at uh, this stuff. Here is, uh, here's uh, Uncle Clyde. My Uncle Clyde sent this to me. He invented this, it's, it, it's a toast lifter. You know, the old toasters, the toast, it doesn't come up enough to pull it out. So he invented this. And uh, I put that up there as a, a reminder of Uncle Clyde. He was, uh, he was a writer and he was a builder. And uh, he was a really remarkable guy. I've got my plumb bob, the chalk line, my dial indicator. I don't use that so much anymore, but there's a place for it. Now the dial indicator, see, I've got a little pin over here. And I pull that out and the dial indicator comes off. You can get real... A creative with this uh, with this copper and wood and stuff and and I hope you're inspired I mean that's what this is all about I want you to be inspired and uh, and and get organized because if you're organized you're gonna save money you're gonna feel so much better about your tools we'll zoom in here on the Golden Girls yeah, that's my first uh, uh, whimsical chicken folk art that I did I got my different squares there we we'll come around here uh, i've got space there you can see for more tools and i'll fill these spaces i'll fill these spaces got my caulk up there different caulk tubes that uh, hopefully the caulk will still be good when i need it and like i said before i've i've got um those see those pins up there those are shear pins for my um for my uh snowblower and uh I got my, uh, now here, here is one, one tool that I do have hung up with something that isn't um, uh, copper wire. I've got a nice uh, grease gun clamp there. Okay, and the, and the two, my two good levels, are, they just hang on a screw. Okay, so you, you can see that there. This, somebody's gonna say, hey, what's this, what's this cord for? Well, I just bring that down, plug that in, and that works my receptacle, outdoor receptacle, the GFCI, uh, just outside the door there. Uh, yeah, so you know what? I'm going to show you one more thing, one more tool organization idea that has worked great for me for years in here and in other places. Okay, we'll come up over the door. Now, you see that? I got snowmobile parts up there. They're in plastic bags, and I used my stapler right here to staple those up there. If you've got a piece of, uh, or a section of wall and you uh, have some plastic bags and a stapler, you can, as you see right there, I've got, here, I've, I've got some, uh, uh, just all kinds of odd things. Bandsaw blade, I got some shotgun shells. I got my, uh, my funnel there. You see I have uh, uh, aluminum foil over the end. That keeps it clean. And uh, I've got some jigs up there, uh, uh, rivets, uh, just odd things 
uh, here. And oh, let me show you. There's my lucky gloves over there held with a, a clamp, a clamp that is held in place with a wire, with a wire loop. My lucky gloves. If you saw my flying tires video, you know what the lucky gloves are. And uh, one more thing before I leave here. This is an unbungee cord right here. And we just hang that down and we hang all our spring clamps on that unbungee. And if you don't know what an unbungee is, you need to watch that video too. Right here is an unbungee. I keep the unbungees right up here on a copper wire hook. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, plastic bags and uh, staples, and you can uh, put a lot of stuff right out there. It's better than sticking it in a drawer because you're gonna lose it, you're not gonna find it. If you got it out on a, on a wall like that, and I got lots more room to staple stuff up here, um, you know, you're, you got, it's more accessible, you're not gonna lose it so quickly. All right, that's my little tour. And that's my, uh, my ideas for organization. You can see the door out to my, uh, my driveway is out there. I do a lot of work just outside the door on the dock because this is a little space. Um, okay, I, I could just keep blabbering away, but I'm not gonna. That's it, that's the end. Thank you very much for watching. If you appreciate this video, if you're inspired by it, um, feel free to buy me a cup of coffee. Details are in the, uh, in the, de in the description below and I'll put links, affiliate links to some of these items that I showed here. Okay, enough said. Bye-bye, everybody.